Hello everyone, I would like to welcome you in the next uh, silk fencing video. Uh, today we're going to do the English version of the grip video. Uh, I naturally will uh, make and uh, generally uh, record two types of videos, the one in Polish version, one in English version, because I consider that uh, it's target targeting different audience because uh, we are um, I'm introducing uh, different things while speaking in Polish and in English, which is um, connected to the uh, cultural barrier of the language. Today's video will be uh, focused around the mechanics of the grip. That is, uh, not only the way uh, that the handles uh, should be uh, uh, like uh, how to put your hand on the handle but actually the consequence of it and uh, it is also an introduction to uh, a series of videos that will analyze different um, specimens or the types of uh, grips that are developed through uh, centuries that I picked to represent some uh, fashions uh, in uh, like fencing or in general uh, cut fencing uh, history uh, and therefore mm, they will uh, be like focused only on um, the, the major functions of each grip and how it actually influences and connects to the fencing that this weapon was uh, created to. For the sake of better understanding, I will introduce some specific anatomical terms uh, in uh, that I will be using later, uh, especially uh, in the movement, but as well two parts of the hand that are uh, not very well known to everyone, therefore I will uh, tell a few things about them. That is the uh, thenar eminence and hypothenar eminence. Uh, they, they will be referred to later as thenar and hypothenar. That is the group of muscles, those cushions right here. Below the thumb is the thenar and the hypothenar is below the small finger. Those are the responsible for different mechanics and also different grips. They support them in different way. Uh, therefore, this is uh, everything that is responsible for this movement of the thumb is our fenner and this is what uh, the the other part the hip hypofenner is responsible for. Now this uh, the mo mo more important aspect is the movement. So we have this plane of movement that is the ulnar and radial uh, division. Next we have extension and flexion of the wrist. The, that is a very important is moving outside and moving inside. Uh, while there is also rotation, okay? So rotation to the outside, when we are thinking thumb, okay? It rotates to the outside, supination. And when we are rotating inside is pronation. Uh, next thing is actually a very important part is a thumb. Okay, and the fingers only flex and extend uh, and abduct and ad ad abduct and abduct. That means it's the, this movement. It's also done with the thumb. So uh, flexion and extension, while we retain the adduction and abduction. That means we are do mo moving it towards the palm. All right, the side of the palm and we are going back with it, okay? So there's an important difference in moving the flexion, flexing and abducting. Also, a very important type of movement, which is called the opposition. So we are trying join, to join the thinner and hypothenner with each other, okay? The small finger joins to the, uh, the thumb, and that's called the opposition. In general, we will be speaking about three types of grip. I'll be discussing 
in detail each grip later in consideration of its influence on the handles in other videos. Right now I'll introduce how to properly handle the three grips, that is the hammer grip, the handshake grip and the thumb grip. Now the important part is that uh, these terms are not official, they are informal terms used in martial arts movement. While in anthropology in general we would use completely different uh, terminology. We'll be using power grips and precision grips. Uh, in this case that means uh, an action that uh, the hold is the holding an object is more important to sustain holding a heavy or light object, right? That is the power grip. Well, when we are uh, focused on maneuvering uh, or uh, doing something with the object, and it's not necessarily uh, like heavy, um, then we are speaking of the precision grips. So, so far, the most important ones in power grips are for us is the cylindrical grip, okay? It's when we are uh, putting our fingers around an object. We are surrounding it with our grip, okay? Um, and spherical grip. Spherical grip is generally when we are actually uh, putting fingers around, we are like squishing it on this way. This is very important because this is the consequence of that well, that grip, yeah, putting a, uh, a fist, while a uh, cylindrical grip is like this. I'll refer to that in a moment. In case of pre precision uh, grips, there are plenty of them, but we will be focusing only on pinch grips, okay? That means uh, pinching, like uh, for example, two pad pinch, pad pinch grips, which are two pad pinch grips, three pad pinch grip, uh, which are um, like when you're unscrewing a light bulb or unscrewing uh, uh, with a two pad pinch grip, uh, like opening a bottle, right? Um, yeah, or we have what is called the lateral pinch grip, so we're pinching the side of our index finger with our thumb. That means, uh, and oh sorry, that is used for like uh, when we are opening a door with a key. That's not um, right now important, the rest of them. Uh, we'll just focus on these and we'll go on further. The first grip I would like to discuss today is the hammer grip. The hammer grip itself as an anthropological term. Uh, that means uh, it is uh, something a little bit different than in case of what we are thinking in fencing. Normally, when we consider the hammer grip, we are uh, in, in anthropology as a, as a term, we are thinking of cylindrical grip. That is putting your fingers around an object, okay? Uh, and therefore, whatever we put it, be it extended or very squeezed, it's still the same power grip because holding an object is most important here. As I said, in fencing, holding and being precise about it is much more important. Therefore, uh, we have to think about different ways and different methods of considering the uh, fencing grips. That is why the hammer grip itself is a little bit different. That's why we are what we are starting with is actually a spherical grip, not the cylindrical grip. Because when we squeeze and finish the cylindrical grip properly, we squeeze a proper fist. Okay? Well when we get through the cylindrical grip, okay, we'll go around and the fist will be um, squeezed as the very late movement, so it's actually not even squeezed properly. Uh, therefore, 
when squeezing uh, it in a way that we should, we should have our knuckles aligned with the blade and the cross guard and as well the wrist should be slightly extended in such a way that the fender right here will be supporting the back piece like this and this is a very important uh, subject because when we are uh, considering cutting okay this is the uh, ulnar and radial deviation all right uh, we are capable of um, not uh, like uh, we are able to support the structure of the cut with the body with the uh, with back muscles because when we would make it wrong way and misalign all that the elevation of the elbow will pull all the shoulders and therefore the shoulder all all the muscles connected to the shoulder will extend and therefore will not be used uh, in a proper way therefore the arm will be quickly um, exhausted and our muscles will not work good anymore also misaligning the blade uh, when we are putting a certain decor grid or putting the fingers around uh, the uh, handle which is a very common mistake will have our uh, blade not support well with the uh, forearm the forearm will go that direction the blade will go di di that direction and therefore to cut properly uh, this means past the edge through uh, the target will be much more problematic because we will have to align additional movements of the joints to actually put that cut in well at the same time if a proper grip happens okay we're capable of putting the edge without any problem and just as we are going with that cut the, sh uh, the elbow and the shoulder are bending naturally towards the plane of the cut in this way we are capable of uh, sustaining uh, long-term exhaustion and uh, therefore we can uh, cut a lot for a very long time and still m maintain some form of precision so when considering the precision we are moving to the second grip the second grip is called the handshake grip that means it looks like shaking a hand at that moment it's what they call a long grip that's my own uh, term because it elongates uh, the or actually hmm, develops the area uh, that is touching the inside of the hand therefore a, a proper stabilization um, or maybe energy dissipation when cutting a uh, heavier object as uh, much much better therefore uh, when we are striking a much heavier object or striking um, a tougher, tougher object um, we are capable to sustain much more damage that is directed back at us um, also the important part is that the entirety of the grip relies on the fact of introducing the hypofender into the grip because in the hammer grip we're actually not uh, using it much we are just slightly squeezing uh, the uh, small finger towards the hypofender and therefore we are mm, like pushing it against uh, the handle in case of the handshake grip we are actually creating an, uh, with the opposition okay of the thumb we're creating a nest where uh, the grip builds up on the hand itself 
therefore the thinner and the hypothenner and the small finger uh, are actually gripping on, this, on their own and with a even proper anatomy of the handle we are capable of moving and cutting with it, only using these fingers therefore as you can see i can uh, uh, i I created tension here to release tension of those two, two fingers and therefore I am capable of uh, introducing a precision grip uh, here with a lateral pinch grip right here okay I am capable of creating additional st uh, lateral stabilization that is uh, stabilization to the sides and as well uh, I can use additional elements like laces ricassos uh, uh, or uh, even some kind of uh, like thumb rings and stuff like this uh, that develop my uh, point control and as well of course the the uh, flexion of the index finger finger and two motions actually uh, of the thumb that is the adduction and flexion of the thumb, which are used at the same time, uh, are supporting the stability even more. And therefore, the point control is very developed. Therefore, uh, I'm capable of using um, or stopping momentum at much greater efficiency than in the case of the hammer grip. Uh, therefore, the, the, the point control, the momentum control, and also the tension though it mobilizes most of these uh, hand uh, grip changes uh, it allows me for a very nice uh, rotation of the wrist therefore when considering the hammer grip it's much easier to use all the joints right here while in here it's um, those movements are much more limited therefore it's easier for an untrained fencer to adapt towards that and as well it's easier for a person to control movement only with the wrist that is very bad uh, very well connected to uh, uh, new fashions of fencing especially in the 18th century the last group uh, we'll be speaking of is the uh, thumb group that means it's actually completely changing the idea of gripping. Right now we are going back to the cylindrical versus spherical grip because what we are doing here is doing the cylindrical grip. We are putting our fingers around an object. That is uh, very important because in the case of hammer grip and uh, the handshake grip, this, these joints were put in front of the handle. Therefore, uh, most handle shapes connected to the those first two grips were either elliptical or uh, triangular that means it, they had some kind of ridge here well when considering the uh, those grips designs for uh, thumb grip these are uh, much more oval uh, especially here and they often have this support here for the thumb now when uh, Considering this, you can see that the, f the part that I'm touching it uh, to the front of the handle is not joint, it's actually uh, a digit. Therefore, uh, I'm capable of uh, using this, a good support of the hypothenner, but at the same time, I'm not using much of the thinner, but a full flexion power okay of the thumb now this allows me to enlarge and develop the cutting power much further because i'm pushing with entire straight strength of my thumb though my capability in uh, point control is um, is extended but at the same time the momentum uh, handling is much worse than in the case of uh, the handshake grip because in case of this lateral pinch grip the only thing stopping me 
to uh, from uh, the movement or stopping in the momentum is the index finger so we are using the lateral pinch grip right here flexion of the finger that is more most importantly uh, developing that squeeze but the important part the tension put on the wrist uh, also tron uh, changes what actually is controlling the momentum right now in this movement the full control of the momentum is retained uh, by the wrist itself it's not in the fingers and case of the hammer grip and or partially fingers and partially wrist as in case of the handshake grip uh, it's fully developed on the uh, wrist movement because this stabilizes it in one way we are also losing some degree of the lateral stabilization therefore there are many manuals suggesting that uh, the, the thumb grip is developed for lighter or point lighter weapons uh, this is true but uh, when considering analyzing the German sources of 18th century we preferred the, the thumb grip uh, they and they used uh, very heavy weapons uh, from uh, one kilogram uh, cavalry weapons point heavy or uh, hilt heavy 1.2 kilogram schlegers of the academy fencing but essentially they just develop a different aspects of the grip and to uh, enlarge the stability and strength of their cutting If you like the video, please subscribe and uh, look at our uh, workshops and eventually uh, the, uh, check our uh, rest of the videos and our web page. And of course, by our staff, we are making sabers, synthetic and steel. See you around.